What's up, mamas? I'm Rebecca. You're watching the Reseller Mom Show. Thank you so much for joining me today for more Reseller Mom content to get more done, make more money, and stay sane while raising kids and reselling online. And today is Saturday, and it is a Reseller Mom Versations episode. I'm so excited to have episode number four, and my guest is Amy. Hello, Thrifty. And I'm excited to have her and just have a great Reseller Mom chat, and I hope you enjoy. Hi, Amy. Hello, good morning. Good morning, how are you? All right, I just got back from vacation like less than 12 hours ago, so That's I'm in like mode of unpacking and shipping all the things. I know, we talked about that before in scheduling this. You're like, well, it's either gonna be a good day or it's gonna be a crazy day. And then I saw that you have like, what, 70 packages going out after your um, you know, extended handling time? Yes. That's awesome. Now, I think when I came back from I don't know if it was my cruiser one a while ago and I had about the same. Um, so maybe that's a good, you know, a good amount that you can handle in a few hours <laughs> when you get back. Yeah. My husband's off today. So after lunch, he's going to come help me knock it out. Yeah. Now you got back and then now you're trying to ship it. Do you have normally like one day handling, you know, like, are you I was, I was gone and I was on a cruise, so I didn't really have access to anything to change my handling time. So I right. had it on 10 days. Usually oh, the whole travel, time. I'll try to change it as I'm gone, but right. it's still on 10 days. I haven't even changed it back yet. Got so. it. So technically you don't have to get them all out today, but you of course want. Yeah. To. I'm shipping the things that sold the longest time ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that makes sense. And, and it's definitely nice if you can still like be away and check in on your phone just to answer any messages or offers or whatever, and then be collecting those sales. It's so nice to come back and know that you haven't completely shut down your business. I've done that yeah. a couple times. We're getting ready for a cruise in October and I'm going to have to shut everything down completely because I don't know. That's what I kind of wanted to, I was excited to ask you having you on the show, like when you're on a cruise and you aren't going to be checking it, did you get offers or did you mm -hmm. take your offer off? Did you have messages? How did that work? Well, we actually went ahead this time and purchased the package where we had internet um, because that was the best way we could figure to interact with our kids while we're gone. Okay. Um, so it didn't work all the time, but it worked some. And so I was able to accept some offers. I was able to answer just, I only had a few questions. Only a few people asked about when are you going to ship this? And I just said, check them, you know, it's got extended handling and they're like, Oh, okay, that's fine. Right. Um, so, I mean, it, it all, and I've done this for several years when I'm gone, I never turn my store completely off. Now my sales probably went down. I probably would have sold twice this much in that amount of time if my handling time hadn't been 10 days. Right. right. But you know, it's, it's, you know, this is my income. So it's pretty stressful to turn it off completely. So. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And the thing too is like, then did you have listings scheduled to go live so that you didn't miss out on the listing portion of keeping your account active? No, what, what I did was I started some auctions right before I left. Okay. That's good. So then those were going to get sold regardless, no matter what. Yeah. And, and without you really needing to do it, anything, and then either they mm -hmm. paid or didn't pay. Got it. Mm -hmm. Interesting. That's a good idea. That's a good tip. And I realized I just kind of started asking you stuff. I didn't really let you introduce. Oh. <laughs> Why don't I go ahead and introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about you when you started reselling and you're, you're obviously a mom and you know, a little bit of that. And then we can, I can grill you more after. <laughs> yeah, cool. Well, my name is Amy. I live in Tennessee. Um, I have three children. They are two, three, and five. Wow. Yeah. And so it's a crazy time and I'm, I'm an old mama. I didn't have my first one until I was in my late twenties and the other two came in my thirties. So I don't have that much energy, but we make it work. <laughs> um, and so I have two girls and a boy and I was a special education teacher for 14 years. And this is my, this is the beginning of my third year since I stopped teaching to resell full time. Okay. And I uh, actually started reselling, gosh, well, I, so, I, I sold on eBay in the late 90s, mm. just like every now and again, like, oh, I need some rent money, whatever, <laughs> you know, come up with something. And then um, in 2000 and, oh, it's been a long time now, 2008, 2008, I had weight loss surgery and I lost like 125 pounds. Oh, wow. And so I had all of these plus size clothes 
and I sold them on eBay. Nice. And I was like, wow, you know, so I started selling a little bit more often. And then about seven years ago, we just found this liquidation store. And that's when I really got the bug and just started going at it. And so I sold, um, I sold very heavily while I was still teaching for like five years. And it got to the point where my, that was almost replacing my income. Like, right can I quit this teaching thing and just do this? Right. So that's cool. Um, now I've been for, for, you know, almost two years, it was just reselling. And then I got a phone call from the school district that I worked for back in February asking if I would work part-time as a homebound teacher. Oh, I didn't really need to do that, but it allowed me to put my daughter in a really good school. So mm -hmm. I am working part-time now. Okay. Well, that's good. Yeah. And you know, it's funny. I think there are some people, cause there's a lady locally that I talked to, um, and she was reselling full time. She was doing something else and reselling full time. And then now she's in the nursing field and got a job nursing because I think with reselling it's, it's great. It can do everything you need it to do, but it's also kind of like, you know, like, are, am I going to make it all the time? Is it yeah. always going to work out? Is something going to fall, you know, down, you know, is the sh other shoe going to drop and like, this isn't going to work out anymore. So I think it's nice if you can have a balance of some part-time flexible something and reselling and a good combo of the both so that you don't feel so like, ah, you know, like maybe next vacation you go on and, you know, won't, maybe you could shut it down for a little bit and you wouldn't feel so, so bad or whatever. Um, yeah. it gives you a little bit of like, cover you know well it's really especially how this has been it's like I, I don't know I mean just reselling on its own was going fine but like now it's like okay well if I get a lot of hours if I'm, I'm working a lot at the other job then eBay's gonna kind of go down a little bit but that's okay and then if I'm not doing a lot of hours fine I don't no problem Christmas right. when I'm not gonna work for three weeks great right. <laughs> absolutely absolutely no and now with two three and five that's a lot I mean I'm managing, you know, being a first time mom, he's now, I mean, not first, I mean, he is my first child, but you know, he's been around now a few years. So <laughs> it's not new anymore. It's going to be four in December. So I have the one little boy and, you know, we talk all day long. He's with me. He's now in school, like three half days a week, just to mm -hmm. kind of get him, you know, oriented to something and give me a little time to do things. So, you know, I now see that he's getting to this age that he has the um, little part-time school. Like I see a light at the end of the tunnel. Like, you know, I know that I will have more time to devote to this. I'm super ambitious career person. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes it is hard to be like, ah, I got to go do this other momming thing because I really would rather work. Well, clearly if you're doing five YouTube videos a week, you are driven. <laughs> you know, I'm, cause I just want to get to a point where not that it's going on its own cause it won't, but get to a point where I feel like I have enough to where it can kind of sustain itself. Mm -hmm. and maybe I'll back off a little bit. I'm also right now really enjoying doing it. And like, I'm so thrilled with doing this conversation series. Like this was the whole reason why I wanted to start my channel to begin with was to talk to other moms and have that available for other moms that are either thinking about reselling or are already reselling because we're, we all go through different stages and seasons with it. Our businesses are so different and our kids situations are so different. So for me, it's nice to be able to pick the brain of someone that has three kids or, you know, one that's a little bit older than mine at five and just say like, what is it going to be like, you know, at that time? What are the different challenges? Because I know I talked to one woman and I don't even think it was on a reseller mom conversations yet. I don't remember when it was, but it was basically like, or maybe I did it in a reseller. I don't know why I forget, but she basically said like, once your child goes to school, cause here I am fantasizing about five full days of school. What could I do with that amount of time? Like, Oh my God, I would get so much done. But she's like, but then when they come home, you have homework and then they're probably going to have some other activity. And then you're going to lose like other time because mm -hmm. now they're into other things and there's other requirements, which I thought was a good point. Or you've got yeah. your head down, you're working, you're going at it and you're looking at the clock. You got, I, I got to get in the carpool line and like, you know, however long. Yeah. So, kind of cuts it out. So your five-year-old's in kindergarten then? Yes. Okay. And then the other two are home with you or are they in something? Okay. This is where, this is how we make it work because I rely on reselling as a full-time job. So right. 
Um, in exchange for housing, my in-laws have been taking care of my kids since they were born while I was working. Ah, okay. And so when I quit working, it's just, it's understood by everybody that I still work full time. So they're, they're with their grandparents during the day for, you know, all day long, just like as if I were at school. And that's good. And that's, I'm really happy actually that you brought that up. Cause this is something that I've been thinking about is that when you work from home, whether it's reselling or something else, but obviously we're all reselling people. So, you know, you're home, you're reselling, you need to go out and do things. You need kid free time. But for the most part, a lot of it is done at home and you can kind of have the kids about, I mean, I don't know what it would be like, you know, if I was expecting myself to do this as my legit full-time income, luckily, mm -hmm. you know, my husband is doing okay. We had made the decision for me to stay home and weren't expecting income. And then this kind of evolved. So I've been under the impression that like, it's okay that I'm not making a full-time income mm -hmm. with the hope that I will soon. And I'm kind of starting now as he's going to approach kindergarten, putting those plans in place to really ramp that up and make it happen. But like you doing it as this is full-time, I have full-time kids are covered and this is my job. I think this may be hard for people to, to do that. Like to, to give themselves permission to say, I'm very I lucky this like a legit, real job and those kids need to go somewhere <laughs> like somebody needs to watch them they need to be in something instead of oh I'm home and I can do this and I can do it all and whatever like I think that's great I see and some people are like miracle workers with children and they're so patient and I can't get anything done with my two and three year old <laughs> <laughs> now my five-year-old she'll come into my little workshop and she'll set the computer or she'll paint or whatever and she can hang out she's good but those two little ones are way too needy I can't get into it. <laughs> yeah I mean I think the the um the hardest age that I've experienced so far was probably about one and a half mm -hmm. one and a half like now that I can kind of look back and retrospect okay I've been reselling since Gio was six months old you know, really more seriously since he was about a year. Um, and you know, now he's going to almost be four. I think one and a half to two and a half was the hardest because they're mm -hmm. just figuring out what they can do, but they can't really do anything yet. And you know, it's just, they, they're exploring a little bit too much and you kind of feel bad they yelling into all of the things. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that was the, the hardest age. One thing that I did um, that was nice is we had a, a YMCA or we still do. We have a YMCA and they will let you do two hours of, you know, childcare in their little daycare area for mm -hmm. one to go work out. Now I didn't really care about working out, oh, but yeah. for me, I went, I let him be in there and we didn't always get two hours. I mean, we had to work up to where maybe he was in there an hour, hour and a half. So he was still in diapers and everything, but you know, he could play with the other kids, have socialization. Yeah. The thing was to be away from me, to learn it was okay. That's great for both away, of you. you know, from Ma. And so he would go in there. I'd go up to the gym and I'd walk on the treadmill or I'd do things, but mostly I was listing on my phone and listening to reselling YouTube videos. So it was work time to me. And it was the, it wasn't photo time or anything, but at least I got things done. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and then he was getting some sort of positive thing about playing with other kids, learning to listen to another adult and being away from me. So You're I felt the house. Yeah. yeah. And I felt like that was a good arrangement. And that kind of got me through up until two and a half. Cause I knew every day I have at least an hour, hour and a half where I could at least get something accomplished, you know, mm -hmm. and then he had nap time, you know, and I would get things done during nap time. Um, well, but, the good thing for me is that I had all this really built up a lot before the kids ever came along. Ah, and okay. So I have so many listings now that a lot of times, you know, if it's a heavy kid day, you know, in-laws are at a doctor's appointment or there's something special going on that I wanted to go to. And I'm like, wow, I haven't listed this way. I'm still like selling stuff. So my biggest job, I feel like I'm like the shipping manager is my number one job. Right. Job. right. <laughs> all the time every day so do you have anybody helping you at all any VA or any helper or anything like that well yes I um, had a young lady from my church that I hired to work 10 hours a week okay and she was doing a fantastic job and then over the summer she's been working extra extra oh, she's okay. going to college next week and I'm losing her ah. and then I have a, a two other young ladies from my church who are sisters and they come together and they'll work, but 
they're really very busy young ladies. They're athletes. Um, so they might, I might get them, I might get them like five hours one week and no hours for two more weeks and then three hours the next week. Yeah. So it's hard to rely then. Yeah. But I'm looking for somebody else. I live in a really small town, so it's, um, kind of hard to come across people. Yeah. Interesting. So, and they will help you with like the physical things, photography or packing things up or shipping or something like that. They do only clothing. Um, okay. I do all the shipping. I do all the hard goods. Um, but I have two racks of clothing that I'll go ahead and have prepared and ready. And they start drafts on eBay. Oh, they wow. take pictures. I have like it listed exactly like if it's this, this is the measurements I need you to take. These are on the photos I need you to take. So they start a draft. They do the photos and then they put in the measurements. And then I'll go in behind them and finish the listing. Cool. All right. Well, that's good. So at least you have you know, some, some kind of help when you mm -hmm. can, you know, every once in a while when you need it. But so now you said when you have so many listings, how many listings do you have? On eBay, I have 3,600. Wow. Um, and then on Poshmark, I think I have like 1,500. Okay. So you're not doing everything. Oh, but you do a lot of hard goods. So that's why you're not cross posting everything or right. Right. Yeah. And then I have a lot of things on eBay because I have an anchor store. I just don't care if I'm, you know, about insert insertion fees or anything. Right. So basically if it's listed and I took the time to list it, I'm never taking it down. Mm. <laughs> so there's a lot of stuff on eBay that has been listed for a very long time, but I sell stuff every day. That's been sold. That's been listed for a very long time. Right. Now let's, so I just leave it up there. I've never talked to any, well, I've talked to people that have an anchor store, but I've never actually talked to anyone about having an anchor store. And I always wonder this, like, do you think that having an anchor store, regardless of the financial math that goes into, um, the list, you know, the number of listings that you should have before you pay insertions versus paying the $300 or whatever it is for the anchor store. Do you think having an anchor store helps you have more sales? I don't think it helps me have more sales. Okay. No. Um, I think probably the best things are, I never have to wait on the phone when I call. Right, them. right. And then I'm almost always speaking to somebody who is very fluent in English and easy to talk to and usually has a better understanding of how things work. Right, right. Uh, when I have an issue. Yeah. Um, you know, but there's no way that I would pay that much for an anchor store if I didn't have over 3,000 listings. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Cause I just wondered that like, you know, I, at one point I had over 2000 listings, but it was in the still low 2000s and I mm -hmm. felt it very difficult to manage. Oh, oh you went somewhere. Uh oh, I, got a, I had a phone. <laughs> ah, I lost you. All right. We'll see if she can come back in. I've never actually done this while I'm recording. So we'll see if it lets her dial back in. But the question that I was going to ask her was, you know, and well, maybe I should wait till she I wonder if she'll come back in. I don't know what to do. <laughs> um, so the question I was going to ask was basically if having an anchor store gave you any like boost in search or boost in any, like I was just curious because I don't have that amount of listings at this time to do. Um, but I was always kind of curious about that. So we'll give it another minute to see if she comes back. Oh, there she is. And it's still required. Oh, good. Okay. I was kind of like holding down the floor and I'm like, I don't know if it would let her come back in while I'm still recording. Like, I didn't know what would happen. I'm so sorry. I had a phone call come in and then I hit the wrong button. No problem. No, but this is good. Cause I, you know, when I record, this is on my desktop and then I don't know how to really like, um, edit videos on my desktop. I only know how to do it on my, like my tech is very limited. So I'm like, I have, I have to push things together. I don't know. I'm going to do that. Yeah. You're back. Okay. So yeah, no, I was just going to ask like, if, but you said you answered it, but my thought was, I wondered if having an anchor store gave you any benefits it, with boosting in search or anything like that, just for the I don't think so. I, of course, I don't know how all that works, but I don't right, think right. so. Yeah, no, I was just curious. So eBay is your primary, and then how, how does it go on Poshmark for you? It's a couple a day, or it's just as good, or... Yeah. I, I mean, Poshmark, I probably sell about three items a day, okay. whereas on eBay, I'm selling about... 15 items a day. Yeah. And you know, and are you doing free shipping? Um, it just highly depends on gotcha. what you do. Yeah. I'm on clothing, it's kind of weird. I don't know. My idea is on clothing, I like to charge a little bit of shipping in case they return for fit. 
And so I'll charge like a flat $3.50 on clothing. Mm -hmm. Anything else that's first class, I do free shipping because it's not likely they're going to return it. But then if it's heavy, then I do calculated so I don't lose money if you know someone in California buys it. Yeah, I mean, that's, I was doing not free shipping, then I switched to free shipping, now I'm not free shipping, and sales really kind of went downhill after I switched to not free shipping, okay. but it was also during the summer, like I switched it at the half of the year, mm -hmm. so July, even last year, was my worst, you know, month, so mm -hmm. um, I just don't know, I don't, I think it's too early to tell for me, I want to see if my sales picked back up, also I got rid of a lot of stuff, like I did a major clearance and just pulled out like a bunch of things, completely out of inventory that I was just like, mm -hmm. so I don't know, eBay, I struggle with Poshmark has been going pretty consistently. And then mm -hmm. I'm surprisingly, you know, hitting a stride on Mercari. So I gave Merc Mercari a try for a little while and it was going fairly well. But then when I started this other part-time job thing, yeah. with platforms, it was just like, I, I, it was a little much. Yeah. Now, are you considering any of these, um, helper things like there's the list perfectly out there and I've noticed some other stuff pop through here and there that's kind of like more software based for cross listing would you ever take advantage of something like that I don't know I'm like yeah. I'm not tech savvy either okay <laughs> so it was like I would have to do a lot of research I'm kind of I I do everything on my phone like I probably do it, it I do it the same way I did it five years ago <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, I, I probably could be more efficient, but. Well, but if it's working for you and you're fine, see, my thing is I'm not happy yet with my levels of sales. So I'm still in very much of like trial and error, finding things that work, you know, trying different ways of doing things, streamlining and, you know, finding my stride. And then hopefully, <laughs> you know, I can stay in that lane for a little while. Um, but you know, up until this point though, you said that you were reselling before the kids, so you already had a solid. And I think if I was ever, I'm not a big person of regrets. I don't like to do that. I feel like your path unfolds the way it should and it's the way it's meant to be. But I'm like, man, what would my like whole thing be like if I was reselling before I had you? <laughs> What well, what could twenty year old Rebecca have done with reselling? You know, or I guess not twenty because this probably wasn't even around. But like twenty something Rebecca. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think about like you know I live in this little small nothing town now, and I I was living in Nashville ten years ago, and it never crossed my mind. I'm in this big city. Why don't I go to some yard sales? I was that's when I was selling those plus size clothes. Why did I not think, hey, I could go and source some stuff to sell? Never yeah. <laughs> so for you, um, since it is a small town, what is your sourcing like? What do you go to? I saw a couple garage sale things, I think, on your Instagram, right? Mm -hmm. so is it mostly that or? I have to travel about 45 minutes to get um, to garage sales or, I mean, because we have some garage sales in my town, but I don't find a lot here. Right. Um, aren't many at all. Um, so usually Friday, garage sale day, I get in the car, I drive to Memphis, I get in the car, I drive to another town that's about 45 minutes away, and I'm out all day. Yeah. Um, I, I, I get notifications from certain stores that I know that I buy things from, and when they're having a great sale, it's, you know, it's sourcing day. Right. So, not like I go sourcing in the morning, and I do a little listing, and it, it, it's like, today is a sourcing day. Yeah. So, that's one reason I have my, I have my um, handling time set to two days. I, I don't do same day or next day shipping just because I can't rely on being able to do that all the right. time. I usually do, but like if there's a great sale that I find out about the last minute, I'm like, mm, I'm not going to have time to do all my shipping today. I'm going to the sale. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome though. That's good. I mean, and that's good. I mean, you, you hit a stride to where you know what works for you, you know what doesn't work for you. You're comfortable to make, you know, those, like for me, I feel like I have to have next day on eBay mm -hmm. because that's going to give me the best whatever. And, you know, um, yeah, you seem more confident in your decision making for your business than I do. Yeah. At least I just, I, I, it's not yeah, feasible yeah. for me. I can't do it. So, you know, and it's been, I, I still make sales all the time and people are always commenting on, wow, fast shipping, you know? So well, that's it, good. It basically gives me that you don't have to ship this today, but I usually do. Yeah. Yeah. My sister, um, is a part-time reseller. She has a full-time job and she has it, I think on two or maybe even three day because she can't even get sometimes to 
like the post place, because we don't have a lot of post offices, but like a, you know, a UPS store or some other mm -hmm. you know, post place um, where you can drop off your packages because she lives in an apartment. So she doesn't have pickup. Yeah. So, you know, she's got to take them to a place, but if she can't get back from work in time to take them, so she's got like almost an extra day built mm -hmm. in there and she's just like, it is what it is. And I'm like, mm -hmm. Ah, that make me crazy. I'm like, I feel like I have to have every little advantage I can just right. to like, you know, keep things going along. But the same mm -hmm. thing too. I have a storage unit. I have two virtual assistants um, and then a photographer that helps me. And mm -hmm. that's not even because I do so much. It's because, you know, the time that I do get is mostly spent sourcing. And mm -hmm. then, okay. you know, oh, that's a dream. the other <laughs> Well, I mean, it, it is and it isn't. I mean, I don't know how many yeah. listings you're putting up a day, but I'm struggling with the photographer and myself right. to even hit a steady 20 a day. Like, mm -hmm. so, I mean, I can't, I'd love to be a person that puts up 50 a day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but, you know, even having a helper, she's only doing it part time and I have geo and then I'm trying to manage my kid free time to try to go and source. And I go to, to our outlet, to the bins mostly. Mm -hmm. And so that's, it can be a very efficient way to mm -hmm. source or it could be an extremely inefficient way to source. It just mm -hmm. depends on the day. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, you know, like I say, I'm, I dabble with like liquidation. I've dabbled with pallets, um, you know, to just, try to switch things up and see if something like that would work for me. But I don't think I could go any specific way only. I think I need a balance of some sourcing and some, some sort of delivery. <laughs> do you do any online sourcing? I've done a little bit. Um, like one time when Nordstrom had their, you know, big yeah. clearance sale, I it was up in the middle of the night when it first went on and I was able to find some good stuff online. Um, and I've bought some stuff to flip on eBay. You know, you look at auctions that are ending, um, at a weird time and they started them ridiculously low. And usually I find somebody who's got something really good. And then I look at what else they have for sale. And they have several things that are really good. For right, right, right. So I've had a couple of good experiences with eBay to flip on eBay. Yeah. Um, that's so, you know, um, I've done some some reseller boxes and um, those kinds of things, but I really I don't have trouble finding stuff. Um, I don't I don't find a lot of times great great quality stuff, but I can find a large quantity of things for fifty cents. Right so. now, is that like Old Navy, Target brands type of thing? Or are you not even dealing with that? And you're talking about like a higher level mall brand, or what are you talking about when you say right. not? Not now, I'll, I'll do Target Old Navy if it costs me 50 cents and it's really cute. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to get away from, from more, most of that, um, you know, because I'm making five bucks. Yeah. Um, but no, I mean, I think I just have a, a good eye. Um, and I, I mean, I sell everything. I sell healthcare products and health and beauty and clothing and sh shoes. I love shoes, toys, collectibles. I just have an eye for that looks like it has some value. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I guess that just comes with time, but I'm actually kind of good. You, you're like, this is like the perfect time to talk to you specifically because all the things that you're bringing up, like I've been wondering. <laughs> so, so like with health and beauty aids or whatever, I just feel like, I don't know if I could take on another thing, like another category that I literally don't know when I don't really, I mean, I feel like I know more about clothing than I did and I'm finding a rhythm, but at least it's all shipping the same way. The mm -hmm. weight will kind of go the same way. I'm taking photos of it the same way. I have a system for that. And so mm -hmm. I could add another platform perhaps, but I don't know that I can do what I'm doing and add another category. Did you always balance multiple categories or do you like master and then add and then master and then add? Okay. When I, when I'm out, it's just, what can I get for cheap? That's worth something. Got it. It's anything and everything. I mean, yeah, I've, I'm looking at my shelf here. I've got like food products, baby formula, Funko pops, wow. <laughs> shampoo, baby blankets, tons of clothes, just, um, 
Okay. No, I, if, if I find it and it's got value, I don't, you know, now doing another platform, that's what scares me, you know, <laughs> but like, no, if it's got, it, it, I've, I've shipped lamps, I've shipped, you know, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't really have any kind of passion for hard goods. Like there's no like collectible where I'm like, ah, I would love to sell, you know, like nothing really like, I just don't care. Like clothing, at least I'm starting to appreciate. Uh-huh. Cause I'm not even a fashion person either, but I'm starting to appreciate better brands, nicer mm-hmm. quality, looking for the feel and the touch of thing. Like I'm starting to appreciate that. And that's good. Um, it's more of just, I can, and it's, and I'm accessible and it's accessible, mm-hmm. whatever. But I would, I'd be curious, like what, uh, if I could add another category, if I wanted to, what it would be. And so it's always nice to kind of like pick the brain and see, like, I've, I've heard people with such great success with like, health and beauty and these random discontinued shampoos or lotions or whatever. Mm -hmm. Find it so interesting because I wouldn't look at any of that and be like, oh, clearly this is something that would have value when it's on the shelf for $2. Like, Mm -hmm. how do you know that something has value? There's like a a thing that goes off for you that you... I've been looking things up for five years. Gotcha. You know, I look up everything. It's got a barcode. I'm scanning it. (laughs) You know, and so, oh, it's just really over the years, I have just established a knowledge for, yeah. oh, there's that, 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 that's a half a bottle of Abercrombie and Fitch um, cologne that I bought for 50 cents that sold for $65, wow. you know, oh, I'm going to keep, you know, and, oh, I found one again. Um, so yeah, it's just experience. Like I was on this cruise ship and it was kind of a hoity-toity cruise ship. <laughs> like you say, I'm not a fashion person either, but I know like what sells. Right. And I'm like, people walking by, I'm like, Hey, I've sold that shirt before. <laughs> I've sold there's, that shirt too. there's this J crew dress that I've now found and sold three times. And I think that was the, the most of what I, there's a, oop, there's, a, there's a couple things that that I've found again and sold again, mm-hmm. but this stupid J crew just like a green, it's emerald green and it's like racer back. And I've always found it new with tags and a couple different wow. sizes. And I've sold it three times now. And I'm just like, what is it with this J crew dress? And it's not anything I would wear. It's not like it was meant to be in my life or anything. <laughs> mm-hmm. No idea, but it, it is cool to kind of have that repetition over time where you kind of feel like, Oh, I've seen that. I've recognized a pattern now you know, and it makes you feel like, okay, I I am getting the hang of this. Um, but you know, you've been doing it a little bit longer and have that with a lot of different things where I'm just like, God, I don't know. Like I pick up probably like every stupid lotion out there and like none of them. Well, Hey, look, I have, I told you I've looked up tons of things. I've looked up a lot of stuff like, nope, nope, (laughs) no, no value. Do you think that there are more flukes with stuff like that. Like, let's say there's a lotion, it's discontinued. You could find mm-hmm. 50 of them. You look it up and you find uh, that it's sold for a crazy amount and then you buy them all. And it's like, well, there was just that one person that thought mm-hmm. to go on eBay and look for that thing and paid a ridiculous amount. But in the great mm-hmm. scheme of things, am I going to find 50 people to buy all of these? No, yeah. for the most part, if somebody at some point has paid something for something, usually I end up getting a similar price. Got it. Yeah, okay. I had a, a, a Ralph Lauren uh, romance lotion that I got on goodwill.com. Yeah. And sold that junk for like 110 bucks. Um, now, and another time I bought a shampoo that was special for swimmers. Okay. And I got a, like two huge plastic tubs full of this stuff for a dollar a piece. Uh-huh. And I sold a set of shampoo and conditioner for $44 and I sold every one of them within like a month. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, there. like I said, I've had a couple home runs with like, I was at a garage sale and this person worked in the restaurant industry. I think he was like, um, like a liquor or beer distributor. So he's going around to all his different accounts, which are bars. And so he has all this promo stuff from like Stella, yeah and you know bud and all these different beer companies and whatever and i guess at one point he was connected with hooters and he had stacks and stacks and stacks of the hooters tank tops Uh and they were all from orlando because i'm in orlando so they were all different orlando ones and i bought them i said how much for all of them i think they wanted like two or three dollars each and i ended up Mm -hmm. getting 
each for like a dollar, either it was a dollar or a dollar fifty. I don't remember. I bought them all and it was like 40 of them. And I'm like, what did I just do? Like, oh my God. And they all sold. Mm -hmm. Sold for good money. I mean, it took maybe like six months for them to all sell, but it's like when you find something like that, like that was a clothing thing, but that was like so awesome. Cause I I was like, man, like I identified that this was a thing, you know, and I don't even know that I was looking them up at that time. I mean, I was very early on. Um, but when you can get a nice multi quantity like that, Oh, it's the best. <laughs> Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> or also you like so good. And there's not any other seller, but it's just really cool. And like sit on something and wait, somebody else will think it's really cool. Like I had this light up plastic vintage Christmas, um, decoration. It said, just Merry Christmas with lights. It worked cheap plastic, but it looked so cool. Mm -hmm. I sold that thing for over a hundred dollars. Oh my God. And the cops on it were like, you know, of course I have had the only one, but another one, somebody sold one for 30, you know? And I'm just like, this is cool. I want a lot for it. And the person actually told me, I just really like this. So, you know, I'm willing to wait too. So people are crazy. I don't know. I don't, the more, whatever I try, cause I thought like, maybe I should really spend some more time, like trying to understand buyers and how they look for things and what their, you know, mindset is. And I should really spend some time thinking about this. And then I'm like, you know what, that's going to make my head hurt and it's going to explode. And I'm not going to do that because I can't, like, I, I buy things online, but I don't, have anything where I'm seeking it out. Like I just need to find this rare vintage crisp. Like I don't feel like that about anything. So mm -hmm. I don't understand that person that has to have and would pay right. a ridiculous amount of money for that thing. Like that's just, it's not me. Well, see, and this is kind of how it's worked for me with reselling. I, I'm not a type A personality at all. Oh, it's like, I'm, I'm messy. <laughs> I'm just like, do what I need to do. Like, I'm responsible. If, if it's on the list and it's got to get done. I'm responsible. <laughs> you know, but, you know, when it comes, it's like, I buy stuff, I list stuff. I buy stuff, I list stuff. I sell stuff. That's it. I don't think about anything. That's my sister. That's totally my sister. I'm going to make her watch this one because... <laughs> sister and I call her and I'm like telling her this whole big like this is what I'm thinking and do you think it's like this or do you think it's more like that or what about this and what and I'm analyzing it from like 15 different points of view and she's like like I don't know <laughs> she's like I'm gonna go now and put something in my crock pot <laughs> like, she just doesn't, she just can't because she's like you just like I buy stuff and I list stuff and for me there's so much all that goes into my mind about it that it's really hard for me. And sometimes I have to say, listen, today you're going to buy stuff and you're going to list stuff and you're not going to think about all that other shenanigans because, uh, but I have to make my, like it's work to make myself say, you're going to buy stuff and you're going to list it. And that's all you need to know today. <laughs> like, well, for me, it's basically like, is this, is, this a, is this a low investment? And most everything I buy, the investment is, tiny yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so i was just like all right let's do it you know I, if i, I get five did. bucks great if i get 105 great yeah and that's the thing i mean you know i was i started out at like the goodwill retail and then i started doing the bins and then i got away from the bins a little bit and started saying let's do liquidation let me buy some boutique wholesale let me do this because it could come to me i don't have to go find it i could sell it again and again and that like completely effed my cash flow for mm -hmm. quite some time. And so mm -hmm. now I'm like back to basics, like back to the bins, like grind it out until mm -hmm. I can figure out something else. Because, you know, I got a little fancy for a little while and that I had to say, no, no, like that's, you're not fancy yet because you're still trying to get 20 listings up and you're having other people help you. So clearly you should not be buying all this cockamamie stuff. So, um, you know, sometimes it's nice to go back to the basics mm -hmm. and, and figure out maybe you've made that circle. Maybe you never ventured off into that, <laughs> but at least, you know, like I said, well, when it comes years. to those bigger buys, I start to think a little bit more. It's like, okay, this is a big investment. If it's going to sell tomorrow and it's like, oh, cause this sells every day. Great. Let's do it. Yeah. But if it's like, Ooh, this is going to take some time and this is yeah. going to be um, money I'm sitting on. I, mm, yeah. Get a little bit more thoughtful about that for a while. I did not look at comps at all because I thought it's more important for me to use this kid free time when sourcing to buy as much as I can 
and mm -hmm. hope for the best and rely on the knowledge that I thought I gathered from watching haul videos or whatever. Now I'm starting to look up comps a little bit more and make mm -hmm. decisions leaving things behind. But even when I look up comps, I'm looking for, did it sell? And how much did it sell for? Mm -hmm. I'm not, now my next phase that I really need to gear into is how often does it sell? When right. did it last sell? Like I just, even though I'm so analytical, I'm always so feeling like I'm pressed for time that I'm not going down these pathways. And I think it would do me a really good solid to see that comp process more, you know, through a little bit more mm -hmm. um, to make those buying decisions. I just get so for Clemt because I have someone that, you know, I have an agreement with. I mean, if I was short one week and didn't give her, I give my photographer 70 items a week, 10 a mm -hmm. day. And then I try to have more for me so that I could also have 10 a day so that ideally we could put up 20 listings. Problem is with the amount of kid free time I get, I don't, I'm not able to find that many things. Mm -hmm. So if I'm already pressed for amount to source, let alone good stuff to source, let alone stuff that's going to sell quickly or mo you know, most frequently, mm -hmm. then I won't be putting up that many. And then the, the question is, is it better to have more or is it better to have more qualified. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm definitely starting to be a little bit more picky. Yeah. You know, I have so many items in my store because I was listing, you know, all of the things and I still, you know, I'll list, you know, I go to the Goodwill now and it's something's four bucks. If it's, it better be pretty good if it's four bucks. Yeah. You know, but if it's 50 cents, I'm like, yeah, I can sell this for $10, you know? Yeah. Well, that's great. You can find something for 50 cents at your Goodwill. <laughs> well, no, this is a, a independent thrift store down the oh, road. Okay. I was like, wow. Every Man. now and again, they just clear stuff out and I go and they're like, oh, hey, Amy. And I buy like, you know, four trash bags full. Yeah. It's nice <laughs> when you can find a local one like that. Is that your honey hole? I saw on your Instagram or what was it one of your YouTube videos and you're like my honey hole or whatever. Is that the one? Your honey hole has changed over the years. Multiple ah. times. It's like, it'll, it'll, there'll be a new place and it's amazing. And I find all the things and then they start raising then the price. Yeah. Or have good stuff anymore but I always seem, seem to find something else well that's good I mean yeah. and that's the thing. I mean there's you're so you're geographically everybody has such different options and then it can be so limiting that you could know all the brands and want to do all the, and then if you don't find it you know mm -hmm. oh about it. and I love to travel to thrift because oh. you know around here I mean, high end is J. Crew. Yeah. <laughs> you know? and but I was I was in Jacksonville, Florida on my way to my trip and I stopped at a yard sale and like I was like, these are the brands of my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to this one yard sale on the way to our cruise ship and I just like this was amazing. <laughs> That's good though. That's awesome. Well what I'm gonna do, even though I this has been great. And I, I found this with every guest and I'll probably end up saying it at the end of every, like I could talk to you for longer. So that means I'll just have to have you on again. Um, but I do like to try to keep it to 30 minutes because mm -hmm. you know, for the audience, we're all moms. And so we probably have got work to do. Yeah. I don't know who's still hanging in there with us. Hopefully someone is, but, um, you know, it's hard sometimes to be able to get that chunk of time. So I guess we'll cut it off here. Um, but let everyone know where they can find you. What's your sure. best, um, you're on Instagram and YouTube. Mm -hmm. I'm hello thrifty on Instagram. I'm hello thrifty on YouTube. Um, Amy Liz T N. Yes. I'll on, <laughs> just say it, but I'll, I'll Poshmark. on Poshmark and then I'm hello thrifty on eBay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. I'll put all of that in the description below. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, I appreciate it. For everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for another reseller mom. Uh, re bleh, reseller mom versations. I keep using, wanting to say reseller mom content like I do at the beginning. Reseller Monversations. Hope you have a great weekend. Thank you so much. Bye.